Hey everybody, it's Taylor and welcome to The Yellow Bird. Over the last few years, I've gradually reduced the amount of new clothing I've purchased, and one of my New Year's resolutions this year has been to stop buying fast fashion. The industry is problematic at best, and at worst is one of the biggest environmental and social challenges we face today. Before a company can make a garment, it needs to be designed. Many fast fashion companies, including H&M, release new micro-collections on a weekly basis. In order to meet that demand of new weekly collections, fast fashion companies often resort to stealing designs from smaller, independent fashion labels. In the U.S., the textile industry is considered a manufacturing industry and is not treated as a creative one, which makes claiming intellectual property extremely difficult and in some cases nearly impossible if it's a small independent designer going after massive international clothing manufacturers. Once the company has a design, the garment goes into production. One of the most commonly used materials in fast fashion is polyester. Polyester is inexpensive to produce, but the process from production to finishing and dyeing is riddled with harmful chemicals. Cotton may seem like a better option, but it's water and pesticide intensive. Excessive water use for cotton crops can put drought-prone regions at greater risk, and pesticides have been known to cause cancer and birth defects and pollute the environment with toxic substances. The cotton industry is also rife with child labor in all stages from growing to making into fabric. Dyeing and finishing materials also have serious social and environmental effects. Second to agriculture, the textile industry is the largest polluter of freshwater worldwide. For example, there are around 500 textile factories that dump untreated wastewater directly into the Chitarum River in Indonesia. The effluent dumped by these companies, which can contain harmful amounts of heavy metals like chromium and lead, is often consumed directly through wells that the water feeds, or indirectly through food like rice grown with polluted water. Toxic substances found in textile effluent can cause nausea, headaches, rashes, and liver problems. Heavy metals in particular can affect the nervous system, causing brain damage and developmental problems, especially in children who are most vulnerable to these effects. Two of the guilty parties in Indonesia, Jistex and Lenzing, have manufactured for companies including Gap, Uniqlo, H&M, and Adidas. Slave and child labor are also common in the textile industry, working over 14-hour days and being denied breaks, including bathroom breaks. Workers may only make around half of what's considered a living wage, and they are not allowed to form trade unions for the risk of losing their jobs. Physical and sexual abuse are also problems. One worker reported, They kick our chairs, they don't touch us, so they don't leave marks that can be used as evidence by the police. Female workers face sexual harassment and abuse and are at risk of job termination if they become pregnant. Garments can continue to cause damage even once in someone's wardrobe. If a garment is made of synthetic materials, such as polyester, it will shed tiny fibers every time it's washed. These microplastic fibers are too small to be filtered out by wastewater treatment and end up in water systems where they, where they are then ingested by a variety of microorganisms and can accumulate in the bodies of larger predators, including humans, through bioaccumulation. One researcher reported to The Independent that microplastics can provide a medium to facilitate the transport of toxic compounds, such as heavy metals and persistent organic pollutants, into the body of organisms, and that upon ingestion, these chemicals can be released into the body and can cause toxicity. Problems continue at the end of the garment's life as well. Synthetic garments do not break down naturally and will continue to exist in a landfill. Donation and recycling may seem like good options, but those optics can be deceiving. Only around 1% of recycled garments are actually recycled and turned into new fibers, since clothing made from blended materials is common but is often too difficult to recycle. And many donated items end up being sold to third parties and are eventually burned in landfills in other countries, including Kenya. Changing the fashion industry requires significant effort from consumers. Since 2000, global textile production has more than doubled. People buy 60% more clothing and wear garments for only half as long as they used to. In the U.S., around 85% of clothing purchased will end up in a landfill, and 5% of landfill waste is textile. Humanity could return to a cyclical garment industry, coming from and returning to the earth, but we must do our part. 
Vote with your dollar, avoid fast fashion brands as much as possible, and opt for quality, timeless garments instead of cheap fast fashion. Thrifting is a great way to shop sustainably on a budget, and if you can afford sustainable brands, go for it. But more importantly than buying is not buying. Maximize what you already have by taking care of your clothing and only add new pieces that you love and know you will get lots of use from. Every little bit counts, and we all have parts to play to help take care of each other and the environment. Comment down below your thoughts, any tips to shop for fashion sustainably, or suggest topics for future videos you'd like me to make. Next week, I'll be uploading a video on making the most of your wardrobe, so stay tuned for that. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Have a lovely day. Bye!